welcome to another installment of the Baring the Archist Vlogs. Today I'm going to show you a bit about ancient Hellenic clothing. And I am going to do this because when I was trying to figure out how to fold these fabrics and make them stay up, there wasn't a video out there. So it seemed like a pretty good idea to make one for you. We are going to talk about four types of uh, clothing today two uh, garments that you can wear, two styles of garments, and two types of clothes. Uh, we are starting with the garments, and for that you need a piece of cloth. And this piece of cloth, this is an example piece of cloth, the piece of cloth itself it needs to uh, be about this much longer than you are yourself. And it needs to span about the width of your arms, uh, but that is only if you are either um, tall or you have really flimsy fabric. Because if you have anything heavier, then I would suggest using a little bit um, less broad, less broad fabric. Because uh, when you bunch it up around your waist. You have a lot of fabric, you start looking like a hobbit, at least when you're small, like me, then um, it's not that flattering. So that is why I would suggest using a little bit less fabric. So what we are going to do is we're going to take the piece of cloth. And I hope the camera stays steady for this, because usually it doesn't. But we're going to try. We take a piece of cloth. Now what you also need are at least two pins. Um, for the peplos you really only need two. For the kiton you need only two. If it's a Doric style or um, if it's an Ionic style you need at least two to four to six more depending on the size of your uh, uh, pins. For the Doric chiton you can leave it like this. And it will wrap around your body and will pin it up. But for a peplos, you need to fold it first. Which means that you take a piece of fabric, a piece of the top fabric, fold it, and let it form so that you have a edge here in the middle where you can see that this comes down to. This is why you need a piece of cloth that is a little bit longer because it's supposed, for women at least, it's supposed to fall to your ankles or even a little bit longer than that. And you also need to draw it up a little. So it, you really need a lot of fabric in lengthwise. This isn't that long, as you can see. So this won't uh, come down to my ankles, but I just want to show you how to put it up. Okay, I swear this is the reason that the ancient Ellens had serfs. Because doing this yourself is incredibly hard, but if you have three arms or another person present, it's a piece of cake. What you do is you take one of the edges, wrap it around your body like so, so you can sort of use your armpit to keep it there. Keep it there, pull this up around you, and then take the fabric. The edges of it and pin it to your, to each other like so and then and you mostly need someone to make sure that this happens neatly because I'm just winging it now if I actually put this on, it takes forever, but fine. Then you take the second one. If you're alone, you're going to have to fumble around with it a little. And then make a neckline. And you will end up with a sort of baggy outfit. Men are actually allowed to wear it to the knees. So this would be all right for men, save for the fact that I totally mispinned it to the side, right? That's why you need the other person. 
Okay, next. And this part is basically the same for both the Paplas and the Doric Chitan. Is that you take a piece of rope or a belt, especially if you want to um, tie it under here. Use a belt. What you do is you tie it. around and tie you can do it like this like over or you can do it both over and under or only under so this is over you can also draw this up so that it falls over the actual rope and when you've tied that you can let it fall over um, what the ancient Allens did to adjust the length is to pull the fabric up over the rope as much as, as they needed it to and then let this fall over and then you, they could use another rope to tie this you wanted to. Okay, then for animation, you take another piece of cloth. Um, men have a slightly easier version. What you do is you throw it over the shoulder, then sort out how the hell this works so like this, throw it over the shoulder. Then for men, can go under the breasts for women, over the breasts. Um, although in art it was um, feasible for women to wear it below the breast as well, but yeah, yeah, for festivals again, so probably you want to wear it over. Uh, remember that you already have something under there usually. Men, by the way, don't have to wear something under it. It was completely acceptable for men to just wear this and go naked for the rest of the, of be naked the rest of uh, the way. Um, wasn't for women. All right, so you take this, wrap it for women over, and for men under the breast. And then I have a little trouble with my black dress. Pull it over the shoulder, so you end up. With the piece here and then fumble it around a bit so it falls right and you can either wear it like this or down the shoulder and if you have a cloth that is long enough you don't have to hold it and that leaves you one arm free so it basically looks like this and for women there is another version where when you draw it up, you pull it over your head and then over your shoulder. And so this is why you need another person. Up. And you can, if you want, draw this up as well. So that you have your head covering. And of course, you can also fold in your hand. There was also another type of um, cloak that could be worn, and it's called a kamis. Um, it was mostly worn by men, and mostly worn by soldiers and messengers. Um, what you did is you take the rectangle cloth, wrap it around you, and then broad, just to give it, for example, here. And then when you pull it over the shoulder, it still falls like this. And it can be worn as a cloak. Thank you for watching, and I will see you um, with a new vlog.